Hi everybody and welcome to another Real Rugby video this week. Last week I picked my Ultimate Southern Hemisphere Dream 15 and today I'm doing exactly the same for the Northern Hemisphere. Again, it was a very difficult task because over the last century or so there's been so many fantastic players that have specifically played in the, in the five and six nations but even outside of those countries. So uh, I took a stab at it, I did some research, I'll give you some stats at the end of this video in terms of how many players I looked at. But again, the process is exactly the same for fullbacks, fly-offs, scrum-offs, number eights, and hookers. I've got a short list of five players, and I'll rank them from five to one. And for the wings, centers, flanks, and locks, locks and props, uh, I've got a short list of ten, and I'll pick the top two uh, for those positions. So let's get into it. Uh, at fullback in uh, in the first position, my top five. And number five, I've got Jean-Luc Sadouni from France. At number four, I've got Andy Irvine from Scotland. At number three, I went with JPR Williams from Wales. At number two, I went with Jason Robinson from England. And top spot for me has to be Serge Blanco. I think just behind Cullen, uh, Blanco was probably the best attacking fullback that I've ever seen play. Uh, he had a big right boot, uh, foot on him. Uh, you could kick the ball a mile as well and really uh, clear from the fullback position. But it was his, his attacking play that really set him apart from uh, any other fullback during the 80s. He will go down as a French legend and one of the greatest uh, rugby players to ever play for France. So as good as the other four players uh, were, for me it was, um, it was cut and dry that it had to be Serge Blanco. I think he was phenomenal. We did a great uh, tribute to Serge uh, on the Real Rugby YouTube channel. Go and check it out. Uh, he was just wonderful to watch. Right, on the wings uh, in the top 10 at 10th position, I went with Philippe Saint-André from France. At number 9, I went with Emile Hintermach from France. At number 8, I went with Simon Gagan from Ireland. At number 7, I went with George North from Wales. At number 6, I went with Ben Cohen from England. At number 5, I went with Yayan Evans from Wales. At number 4, I went with Gerald Davies from Wales. At number three, I went with Shane Williams, also from Wales. Uh, at number two, it might be a little bit of a controversial decision, but I went with David Duckham, the, the great English winger of the 60s and 70s. Um, again, he didn't play as many tests as a lot of the players on this list did, but he was just wonderful to watch. He had immense pace down the left and the right wing, whichever side he played. Uh, he had a fantastic uh, sidestep um, that just bamboozled defences. Uh, there's a lot of old BBC footage available out there. Um, if you can, go and find some footage on David Duckham. Uh, I loved watching him play. Looking at the older amateur generation, he's really a name that stands out for me. He made a big impression on me when I first saw him play as a, as a young kid. Uh, and as good as players as uh, you know Shane Williams, George North, these guys were, um, I would love to see David Duckham in this side. And next to him, in top spot uh, on the left wing, I went with another Englishman in Rory Underwood, who I think was just a fantastic finisher. This guy had blistering pace. He wasn't a big player. He sort of reminded you of, a, in South Africa, of a, of a Cheslin Colby, Brent Russell type of player. Small, but exceptionally explosive. Uh, scored a lot of tries. I think, I stand corrected, but I think he still holds the, the try scoring record for England. Um, just a wonderfully gifted player. His brother also played for England, but I think uh, Rory gets the nod and uh, and seeing him and David Duckham on the wings, I think would be would be fantastic. So those are my picks uh, in first and second position for wing. Looking at the centers in 10th position, I went with Yannick Josion from France. At number nine, I went with Owen Farrell uh, from England. At number eight, I went with Jonathan Davies from Wales. At number seven, I went with Jeff Butterfield from England. At number six, I went with Will Greenwood from England. At number five, I went with Scott Gibbs from Wales. At number four, I went with Jeremy Guscott from England. At number three, I went with Philippe Sella from France. In number two, and the guy that I would pick at inside center has to be Mike Gibson from, uh, from Ireland. Again, he played you know, a couple of decades ago, and I don't know how many people remember him, but he was just as good, if not better, than a guy like Brian O'Driscoll. Uh, he played fly off and inside center for Ireland. Uh, and if you really know Irish rugby and British rugby in general, uh, Mike Gibson's name is right up there. He's one of the greatest players of all time. He was a beautiful, silky runner, 
great distributor of the ball. He's the perfect person to have on the inside center because he also played as a fly off. And uh, I think he could distribute the ball to those dangerous outside backs. So I loved watching Mike Gibson play. Uh, I still think he's one of the greatest players of all time. Next to him, I picked another Irishman. I think it goes without saying that Brian O'Driscoll was, was one of the greatest outside centers of all time. I'd probably rank him just behind a guy like Donny Gerber. Um, but I think O'Driscoll, you know, what he did for Irish rugby and how he elevated the profile of Irish rugby was fantastic. He was a real superstar. And uh, when he came on the scene, that's really when you saw this uh, re-emergence of Irish rugby and they became uh, really a top side. You know, in the 90s, they, they, they were competitive, um, but they weren't that flashy. And he brought a lot of class um, to, to that Irish side in, in the 2000s. Uh, that 2001 British and Irish Alliance Tour really showed the world what a world-class player he is. Won the, the Grand Slam in 2009 as captain. And I think he'll go down as one of the greatest rugby players of all time. And, you know, uh, from seeing interviews and things like that, I think he's a top bloke as well. So I've got two English wi wingers and uh, two Irish midfielders. I went with Brian O'Driscoll and Mike Gibson in the centers. Looking at the fly-offs in fifth position, I went with an odd choice, but I went with John Rutherford from Scotland, who I think was a, was a very, very good fly-off. At number four, I went with Ronan O'Gara from Ireland. At number three, I went with Barry John uh, from Wales. At number two, I went with Phil Bennett from Wales. And in top spot, I had to pick Johnny Wilkinson. Now, if I wanted to pick a really attacking team uh, or attacking uh, backline, I probably should have gone with Phil Bennett or Barry John as they were, you know, they were running fly-offs um, that really got the backline uh, going. But Johnny Wilkinson is such a legend. Um, he was so immense to that English, England side between 2000 and 2003 to the, to the, in the lead-up to that World Cup. Um, I think... I made this comment about Martin Johnson, and I feel the same way about Johnny Wilkinson. If he wasn't on the field against Australia in that final, I have serious doubts whether England would have won that final. And, and that's how big his impact was. Um, a wonderfully gifted player, one of the few fly-offs in the modern era that could kick with both feet equally well. Um, tactically very astute, knew how to play the percentages. Uh, I think he was underrated uh, as a distribute, uh, distributing fly-off. Uh, I think he was very effective at getting his backline going. Um, and I think he was just an all-round fantastic player. So I'd pick Johnny at number 10. So who's going to feed the ball to this backline? Uh, at scrum off in fifth position, I went with Conor Murray from Ireland. At number four, I went with Rob Howley from Wales. At number three, I went with Fabian Galtier from, uh, from France. Uh, apologies. At number two, I went with Matt Dawson from England. And top spot, again, I don't think it's a surprise. It has to be Gareth Edwards. Um, he's widely regarded as one of the greatest rugby players, if not the greatest rugby player of the previous century. Um, he also scored what is known as the try of the century in 1973 for the Barbarians against the All Blacks. Um, but he did a lot more than that. You know, he could kick. He was tactically very aware. Um, his service was crisp. He sniped around the fringes. I remember a try against uh, a try he scored against Scotland in the mud. Uh, I think it was in late sixty, no, late sixties, early seventies, um, where he just broke from the base of a scrum in his own twenty-two, ran upfield, kicked forward, and dived over in the mud to score a fantastic try. So he was a try scorer. He had an eye for a gap. Um, he was a fantastic leader within that Welsh side, and also for the British and Irish Lions. And uh, and he will fondly be remembered as one of the greatest if not the greatest scrum off of all time. So I had to go with Gareth Edwards uh, at number nine. Moving into the forward pack at number eight. At number five, I picked Dean Richards uh, from England. In fourth position, I went with Imanol Harry Nordicke from France. In third position, I went with Mervyn Davies from Wales. In second spot, I had to pick Sergio Parise from Italy. At number one, another Englishman, I went with Lawrence Delalio, who I think was a fantastic rugby player. A big, powerful, brute force of a player. Um, he, like a guy like Henny Miller, he used the back of the scrum as an attacking platform. I remember a couple of tries that he scored specifically against Wales, I think around 2000, that he literally just picked up the ball from the base of the scrum and carried four or five guys with him over the try line to score. So he was very effective to help teams get that go forward ball and really attack from 
Um, he had above average distribution skills for a, for a tight forward. Um, but I think it's the momentum that he gave to the team when he was carrying and also the defensive work um, that he put in during games that really made him the wonderful player that he was. On top of that, he was a great captain. Uh, and uh, I think Lawrence Delalio is a, is a fantastic player. So I'd pick him at number eight. And the flankers that I would pick next to him, I picked from the following list. At number 10, I've got Peter Omani from Ireland. At number nine, I went with Jean-Claude Skrela from France. At number eight, I went with Fergus Slattery from Ireland. At number seven, I went with Sean O'Brien from Ireland. At number six, I picked Neil Back from England. At number five, I went with Olivier Manier from France. At number four, I went with Jean-Pierre Rive from France. At number three, I went with Richard Hill. And at second spot, and the guy that I pick at number seven is Sam Warburton from Wales. Uh, he recently retired and it's so unfortunate that uh, we didn't get to see him at the 2019 Rugby World Cup. I think he was just a wonderful rugby player. Fantastic captain for Wales and the British and Irish Lions, a very successful captain of the British and Irish Lions. Um, such, a, su such a strong defender and uh, very effective on the ground to win turnovers. I think he was the ultimate flanker, uh, specifically looking at those Northern Hemisphere countries. I can't really fault his game. I think he was the complete package. Uh, it's just a shame that uh, he decided to retire at a very young age and uh, we wish him well, but you know what a player. I think, uh, I think Warburton was one of the greatest uh, of all time. Equally as good, and at number six, uh, and in top spot, I went with Thierry Dusitoire, um, who, oddly enough, enough didn't play like over a decade for France, but when he played, I think he was probably the best player uh, on the field for France. Man of the match in the 2011 World Cup final, scored the only try for France in that final. Um, he was just Mr. Consistency. If you go back to the 2007 quarterfinal against the All Blacks in Cardiff, just go and look at all the tackles that Dusitoire made. He was immense. Uh, the All Blacks couldn't couldn't go anywhere because he was at the forefront of that defensive effort. So uh, I know a lot of people talk about the forward pass and what have you, but Dusitoire really uh, was the difference in that quarterfinal for me. I think he made a fantastic impact. And like Warburton, you know, just a, a solid player, one of the greatest flanks of all time. And uh, Although they were fierce rivals, I'm, I'm specifically thinking of uh, the, the 2011 uh, semi-final. Um, you know, I would love to see these guys play next to each other and, uh, and they make my fantasy team. In the locking position, going into the tight five, at number five, I went with Gordon Brown from Scotland. At number nine, I went with Courtney Laws from England. At number eight, Fabian Palouse from France. In number seven, I went with Maro Itoje from England. At number six, I went with Willie John McBride from Ireland. At number five, I went with Walter Spangero from, from France. At number four, I went with Ellen Wynne Jones from Wales. At number three, I picked Paul O'Connell from Ireland. At number two, I had to pick uh, Martin Johnson in my starting lineup, and he's the guy that I would pick at, at number four in my fantasy team. Like Wilkinson, and I've made this comment before, I think Jono was so instrumental to that England side in 2003 that I, I honestly doubt that they would have won the World Cup if he wasn't captain. Um, he was a very, very physical player, never stood back for anybody in, 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 the, you know, in, in the tight loose. And, uh, and I think he's the greatest England captain of all, of all time. So tough not to pick guys like Paul O'Connell, Alan Wynne-Jones, Willie John McBride, but I had to make place for Martin Johnson in my starting lineup. Top spot, uh, and the guy I would pick at number five has to be Benoit Duga from France, uh, who played in the 60s uh, for France. Donny Craven rated him as one of his five all-time greatest players, which coming from a, a, a guy like Doc Craven is a very, very high accolade. I can promise you that. And, uh, you know, Benoit Duga was just a, a giant of a man, one of the all-time greatest French rugby players. Um, very, very physical, very, very strong uh, I remember when he played against South Africa in the 60s, uh, he was a menace and he was one of the guys that we always had to keep our eye on. Um, Benoit Duga with Martin Johnson, I don't think I can do better than that as a lock pairing. Looking at the front row, at, uh, in 10th spot, I've got Alfred Roque from, uh, from France. At number nine, I went with Tag Furlong from Ireland. At number eight, I picked Christian Califano, also from France. At number seven, I went with Adam Jones from Wales. 
At number six, I went with Tom Smith from Scotland. Uh, at number five, I went with Ian Mighty Mouse McLaughlin from Scotland. At number four, I picked Martin Castro Giovanni from Italy. At number three, I went with Jason Leonard from England, purely because he could play uh, both sides of the scrum. In second place, I had to go with Graham Price, the legendary Welsh uh, prop from, uh, from, the, from the 70s. Uh, he was renowned for his strength in the front row and uh, and he will be remembered as a Welsh, Welsh legend. I picked him at tight head. Um, you know, he had a fantastic reputation as a player and as one of the real hard men of, of world rugby who never take, took half a step back for anybody. Uh, I picked him next to another Welshman and in top spot and at loose head, I went with Geffen Jenkins. And for some reason, I don't know, maybe it's just the conversations that I'm having with people. His name never really pops up. But if you look over the more than a decade that he played for Wales, the impact that he made to that side, always being Mr. Consistency, they were a solid front row with him and, uh, and Adam Jones in tandem. Uh, I think Geffen Jenkins was the complete package in, uh, as a front row, solid in the scrums, a very strong carrier of the ball, um, very strong in the tight loose. He scored some fantastic tries um, for Wales as well when, when he was put into space. So... For me, he was the complete package and, and he had everything. And uh, I think having that Welsh uh, combination in the front row uh, uh, works for this team. So so those are the props. I went with Gethin Jenkins at Loosehead and Graham Price on the tight head. Um, picking the hooker was also very, very difficult. But my top five in fifth position, I went with Rory Best from Ireland. Number four, I went with Guilherme uh, Girardo from France. At number three, I went with Brian Moore from England. At number two, I picked Rafael Ibanez, also from France. And top spot had to go for, uh, to Keith Wood from Ireland, who I think was just one of the greatest players to watch play. It was so fun to watch. And because everything he did on the field was you know, done with so much passion and pride, um, he was extremely explosive uh, when running with the ball. He was ferocious in the tackle. He was solid at set piece. He was a very, very good scrummager. And on top of that, I think he was one of the greatest... Uh, Irish captains of all time. So I had to pick Keith Wood. He's a real character of the game. And I don't think there's enough characters in rugby anymore. And uh, I think he would be a perfect fit uh, for this Dream 15 of mine. So that's it, guys. That is my uh, ultimate Northern Hemisphere Dream 15. Uh, just to give you some stats in terms of how many players I looked at. In total, I looked at 362 players. Six from Canada, 86 from England. 89 from France, 63 from Ireland, 14 from Italy, 44 from Scotland, and 60 from Wales. Uh, from, from that list, I condensed it down into my short list, which consisted of 19 players from England, 19 from France, 14 from Ireland, 2 from Italy, 4 from Scotland, and 17 from Wales. And then ultimately, in my Northern Hemisphere Dream 15, I picked 5 Englishmen, 3 from France, three from Ireland and four from Wales. So I think it's a, a very representative spread across uh, the Six Nations teams. Um, but that is my side. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about my selection. Uh, give me your opinions. I'd love to hear back from you and, and tune, again, tune in again next week. Cheers.